Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another model video. Today we'll be unboxing, building and reviewing the Ravel Imperial Star Destroyer in 12300 scale. Released in 2012, reboxed recently by Disney with a ton of information, color graphics, self-promotion of tools, paints and glue, plus a color guide. Inside the box is instructions, full color, lots of information in multiple languages and a full comprehensive guide on model building. Water slide decals of the Imperial symbol with hints on how to use. The kit is laid out in two light gray polystyrene runners with approximately 20 parts most components can be assembled snap fit the proportions and silhouette does look good the detail and greeble is a bit interesting puritan and keen scale modelers may be annoyed by the large circular blobs and lack of detail. At a pinch, it's already colored in the appropriate scheme from the source material. I'll be using standard and beginner friendly methods for building and finishing this kit, including the double cut method with plastic side cutters, cleaning up nubs with a sharp knife, filing sanding down and plastic cement to assemble even if snap fit. With the tonnage of tiny text literature in the instructions, everything else indicates that this is a child or beginner friendly kit. With intent of turning it into a competition showstopper or just a lazy snap together, it will not pose much of a challenge and shall be completed very quickly. The instructions were very clear and well laid out, all the fittings connected and assembled without any issues. Not offensive and almost boring, but hey, I've got a Star Destroyer and I'm pretty happy with that. I almost confused this with a vintage kit and it took the little stamp inside to let me know it was made in the past decade. I find the overall aesthetic to be very appealing in an old fashioned sense. But hey, I'm a big fan and sucker for fairly quick, easy, bad or old model kits. Would definitely recommend and you can do more works or customizations with it, but may not be everyone's cup of tea. That's a small cheap model for you. To make this a bit spicy, I ran off some blockade runners via my resin 3D printer of the same scale, a free model. Super gluing it to the front to depict the opening scene of A New Hope. The painting stage can be overly simplistic or quite a challenge depending on what you're looking for. The Ravel model is extremely chunky, leading itself to hand painting or airbrushing. To prime, I've started with an automotive lacquer filler primer, thinned with industrial premium thinner via 0.5mm airbrush in a small compressor. There were no split seams issues, manufacturer faults or ejection pin marks to address and immediately went to painting starting off with a pre-shade of a extremely dark grey around the edges. The area's light is trapped and the bottom including the hangar bay. Strategically in a non-outline sense pre-shading can work quite well and with an additional three greys going from a medium grey gray all the way to a very light would strategically point out different areas on the bottom and top and lightly shade my way up. We have talked about painting in Star Wars that it is quite a challenge as the whole cinematic universe, even the video games or animation, whatever you want to do, is a lived in universe with lots of weathering, shading and these larger than life vehicles. For a beginner, spraying in an absolute light grey and a bit of a wash will suffice. Uh, that is where the real definition pops out and I'm using an overly thinned Tamir accent colour black to bring all of the greeble, the detail, the panels to life and mopping it back. A little bit of hand painting was required for the thrusters to make it look like it's in motion. After 24 hours of drying, I used a matte clear to dull everything down for a flat in scale finish. 
When I think of Star Wars, one of the iconic vessels I always think about is the Star Destroyer and a model that I'm always drawn to. I have uh, done this a few times with the Mini Bandai offering and a 3D print. This has been my favourite so far without attempting anything in a much larger scale, which will occur sometime in the future. This was a mental build. A fun side project that was built in a couple of hours and painted in a couple of more. It shelved for a very long time because I really wanted that silly blockade runner right at the front. For an impulse purchase with no research or understanding what was in the box, I was completely satisfied and have a finished piece that has given me a lot of joy with a very little effort in between much bigger projects and not finishing anything for quite a while. In conclusion, absolutely awesome. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time, stay tuned for further content and we'll catch you guys later. See ya!